Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today I'll be showing you why the RD704 is one of the best weapons in Tarkov since its recent addition in patch 12.12.30. The RD is the newest weapon in the 7.62x39 suite which enables the use of 7.62 BP, an incredibly powerful round for PvP. As a Mechanic 3 purchase, this gun was originally available on the flea market, but as many had predicted, this has now been removed, likely due to how well it performs at the top levels of play. With a base price of 115,000 rubles, it appears very expensive at first glance, but it comes with some interesting features that help to make it a little more accessible than it might seem initially. The default configuration has 71.5 ergo, which is super high by the way, and 97 recoil, which is very average, but note that there is only one handguard and no barrel options. The pistol grip that it comes with, the AK Tango Down Battle Grip, is in the second best grouping alongside the RK3, the US Palm and the Scorpius Aeronox which all have 12 ergonomics. But probably the most important feature is that although the RD comes with an AK to M4 stock adapter, with a stock attached to a buffer tube, the way that stocks are balanced in Tarkov generally means that the AK specific versions are much better than those for western weapons like the M4. On this basis, because the RD can use either, changing out the entire standard stock section for one of the wooden AK ones at around 2k, the VPO is the cheapest, and then a butt pad on top for 5k gets to 67.5 ergo and 83 recoil. So at the cost of 4 ergonomics, we get 14 recoil back, definitely a worthy trade off in my opinion. What's more is this change ends up making money because the adapter, tube and stock sells back to mechanic for just under 8k. If you want to try it on a budget, this is a good starting point for the weapon. In terms of where it gets to at minimum recoil, we use the PRS QDC combo as a muzzle brake suppressor, RK2 foregrip, the ME4 adapter, the MT crosshair buffer tube and the PRS Gen 3, along with a bastion cover to get to 43 vertical recoil. As you can imagine, this is really an insane number for 7.62x39, but as normal, this combination annihilates your ergonomics, so typically we change out some of this stuff for more efficient mods. As the handguard is MOE compatible, the AFG M locks tend to be the easiest and best bang for buck from Peacekeeper 3 as you don't need the rail to attach it. Stocks wise, although you can get this high recoil reduction from the tube combos, the ergo, price and inaccessibility through quest locking doesn't really justify it. If you wanted to go for something better than the wooden stock budget version we spoke about before, the best AK style fixed stock is the Zhukov, which is 2 more recoil but 16 more ergonomics. With these two changes we get to 61 ergo and 48 recoil, pretty good stuff. Whilst this is undeniably a good weapon, the issue here is that the suppressor combo is 80k on its own and it makes the build kind of expensive at 225,000 rubles before any optics, mags or ammo. The two best alternatives here in my opinion are firstly the unsuppressed build which is 79 ergonomics and 50 recoil using the blast mitigation 3 part muzzle, although I will say it's not as cheap as you would think at around $400 for all 3 parts. If you can manage the muzzle flash on this and don't mind being unsuppressed, this also keeps the gun very short at 4 slots which can help in CQB around corners and doors. Otherwise, the Thunderbeast barter is usually pretty good if you grab the parts at the right time off the flea market as boss caps can be found at around 10k and leather caps at 12, making the barter only 34,000 rubles for the second best suppressor, which costs 46k total when counting the muzzle brake as well. This gets to 61 ergonomics and 53 recoil for around 195,000 total build cost. Optics is the same as many other weapons given the Bastion Rail, so you just pick what you prefer. If you want to go strictly best, either the Voodoo or the Razor are amazing because they keep an incredible sight picture when you're on full auto. Something like the TAC-30 is much cheaper but makes life tricky when in close combat due to losing that sight picture on the one times mode, so is more suited to medium and longer ranges. These variable scopes do work well with the RD though, as one of the big benefits about the 7.62-39 caliber is its high damage across the board, meaning that unless you're firing at extreme ranges it still takes down enemy PMCs with relative ease. Compared to 5.45 and 5.56 where you have to make a fairly stark trade off between damage and penetration, in 7.62 this is much less of a problem. BP rounds for example still have 50 damage at 200 meters from its starting value of 58 and a penetration of 40 from 47 which is the same as 545 BT at point blank. For a round not designed for sniping it does a relatively decent job in a variety of scenarios, the only real downside being the round velocity which given it's only 730 meters per second to start with starts to get a little bit low as you reach out further to targets. It's also a fairly straightforward calibre overall as 99.9% .9 of players use either the PS or the BP cartridge. While PS is great early game and on a budget with its pen increase to 35 in patch 12-12-30, it will have real issues with class 5 armour. 
By the time players are using the RD, an overwhelming number will be using BP instead, given the much better performance against class 5 and 6, however the jump up to BP rounds is pretty steep, both in cost terms and progression. For reference, 762 BP has a 55% chance to penetrate class 5 on the first hit at close range, and a 96% chance against class 4, so there's only a small minority of armors in the game that players actually use that protect decently against it. It is still sometimes found in raid on rogues, raiders and boss guards, but typically players will either craft it in the hideout or buy it from Prepple 3 for 1320 rubles per round. BP used to be locked behind Punisher 5, but as it's now behind Grenadier instead, which is a much more annoying quest to complete, this has slowed down the general adoption of the cartridge this time around for the typical mid-game player. That said, I think the craft is actually pretty decent for once. Usually ammo crafts are incredibly expensive, and although it takes 16 clear hours to complete with base hideout skills, for 2 blue and 2 green gunpowders this only costs about 95k total, which works out at just under 800 rubles per round. Compared to the trader price of 1320 rubles, this is around 63k cheaper per 120 bullets. You could be making something else profitable in the workbench though, and making green powder and selling it on the flea, which is incidentally one of the best crafts for total profit in the workbench, only makes around 35k, so if you do the craft for BP while you're away from your PC, it can be better than buying it directly from the trader. As it takes quite a long time to make, if you're in a situation where you can't get much of it or just want to decrease the price overall, loading PS underneath the BP inside your 30 round mags is definitely a cost efficient way to reduce the amount that you lose when you die without affecting your operational effectiveness much, especially in the spare mags. With the first one full of BP and the other two half and half BP to PS, it's rare to get down to the PS rounds, but very common to die with the other two mags untouched, and if both have 30 rounds of BP in instead, you'll find yourself running out much more quicker than you'd like. Losing 45 or 60 per death per loadout rather than 90 can make a big difference if your supplies are relatively tight. Now, any video on the RD would be incomplete without at least a quick showcase of the recoil between it and the mutant. The two builds used here are similar in essence, i.e. good recoil to ergo balance mods which gets the RD to 53 recoil and the mutant to 62. What's more, the mutant has a fire rate of 650 versus the RD's 600. However, when we shoot, you can see that the mutant's overall recoil is technically lower than that of the RD, which is down to the usual issue of stats between guns not being comparable between different weapons. In this case, the mutant's time to return the crosshair to the centre of the screen between rounds is faster than the RD, which compounds in full auto to make the mutant's average point of impact lower than the RD when the full auto spray kicks in, despite having a higher rate of fire and in this instance a higher recoil number in the stats as well. The important point here though is the horizontal recoil. The RD is quite a bit better than the mutant in this regard, and although better vertical recoil is always good, you could argue that it's easier to learn and control, given that it always goes in a similar pattern of up and then levels off afterwards. Horizontal, on the other hand, is really tough, as it's random whether it goes left or right on each shot, and it's much harder, if not impossible, to control properly. On this basis, you might actually prefer to give up some vertical recoil benefits to get the horizontal improvements, making the RD superior to the mutant. In super close quarters though, the mutant's faster fire rate and flatter vertical recoil still probably wins out overall. So if you haven't already, go and check out my armour guide on the new Tasmanian Tiger rig, as the armour mechanics revealed there allow it to take 3 shots of 762 BP before you die on the 4th. For under 150k, this is incredible performance for an armour, and this rig is going to be my new go-to for the near future. Otherwise as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.